Good evening, everybody. We're about to get started. So we, we can grab our seats. Ian Barnes, that's you too. Let's get this show on the road. So first, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. As I always say, I love summertime. I like hot weather. I'm from Alabama, so you're here on the inside with us. We could all be outside doing whatever. So I just appreciate you being here tonight. We got a lot in store for you. I'm actually doing a presentation on business automation. So it's packed. It goes over the psychology of automation. And then we go into the nuts and bolts of automation a little bit. Because I firmly believe that your mind has to be in a certain set frame in order to implement anything like this. I can give you a stack of papers and say, hey, this is how you automate your business. But if your mindset is not there, you'll never follow through on that. You'll just have a stack of papers that you pay $800 for and be no more successful than you are already today. So welcome. I'm going to do my book thing a little bit later. Right now, if there are any sponsors or VIP members, you may come up and do your quick pitch. Only a few people. Um, hi, everybody. I gave everybody, if anybody didn't get one, these are my handy dandy little pink flyers. I'm Steve LeRae. I own LeRae Insurance. Um, again, these are three and six month builder's risk quotes. Why pay for a year if you don't have to? Uh, you're going to fix it up and flip it out, and you'll be gone in six months. Fine, we'll, hap we'll happily sell you a six month policy. So, uh, we do a bunch of landlord stuff. Um, great amazing rates on rental properties if you're a landlord and I've got a new company uh, called Windsor Mount Joy it's great and if you're what we'll do is we'll write a vacant for you and as soon as you rent it out we'll turn that into a landlord policy pretty cool thing um, a little picky though you can't have vacants next to you any commercial risks things like that so uh, my phone number if you need us is 410-602-2636 uh, or just email me steve at lorraineinsurance.com is the best way to get me and I will happily get back to you, um, Steve at LorraineInsurance.com. Thanks so much. Evening, everybody. Good evening. My name is Joe with Press Go Management. Try to like step on the gas. Press Go. Press Go Management. So I'm uh, kind of a storyteller, and one of the latest trends in funding, Presco Management does funding, is uh, you don't need a private equity lender, you don't need a hard money lender, just go direct to the guys with money. And you can even search now, there's several sites that you can hook up with individuals who lend money. You know, why use a hard money company or a funding company when you can go right to the guy with the money, right? So yesterday, the story is, a uh, gentleman did a $550,000 private deal, didn't vet it through a company, just kind of, you know, winged it with uh, his own paperwork and his own um, deeds and notes, all that, and um, didn't put an expiration date on the uh, note. So there was no due on sale. Finished the rehab, went to sell the property, and the buyer said, uh, there's no expiration date on this. I don't have to pay you. Well, you know, the guy lent the money. It's his fault, right? So what's the big deal to the investor? He got his money, he built the house. <clears throat> the investor, who had made the mistake, private individual, said, uh, I'm going to sue you. We'll take it to court. We'll hold up this sale for six months. Please, don't follow all the trends that you read about. Get good help, deal with reputable people. This is one of the best meetup groups around. And if you check out your funding sources with people in this group, um, that's what will carry you through. My phone number is 443-336-7000. We specialize in 100% of purchase, 100% of rehab, hold a little bit back on the rehab amount. 
We also do long-term hold. Uh, we also do lines of credit, and we will do a JV partner match. You come to me with money, but you don't have a property, we'll find somebody for you. You come to me with a property, but you don't have money, we'll find somebody for you. Joe Child, Presco Management. We've got some cards, too, if anybody wants one. Okay. Hey, Chef. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm Bill Ames. Um, I'm assuming most of you have at least heard of me. But, um, because my name is almost everything that comes out from the club, so you, you'll see me. Um, thanks, everyone, for coming. Um, many of you, I'm sure, have heard of Tyrus or know him, but he's never done a presentation here before, so... Should be interesting. Interesting, good? <laughs> Should be fun and exciting. <laughs> um, so uh, for me, my primary business, uh, how I make a living, how I, you know, we, we do the club free. So, um, you know, you're all here and somebody still pays for all this. So my primary renovation business, um, I do renovation for a living. Um, but my, you know, my other business kind of funds this so we can make this happen. Yes, I have benefits from it. I get, I get a lot of deals because of it. I'm always looking for more deals. So, um, you know, it becomes a marketing tool. How do I market myself? How do I market my business? Um, and put some of the money back into this just to make it so everybody can come here and have fun, right? No? <laughs> hey! <laughs> I can't see a thing without my glasses. Um, uh, so, for me, I, um, I have a bunch of rentals, so I'm always looking to buy more rentals. Um, I buy in the Baltimore market, um, which is close to home. It's the areas that I know well. I'm always looking for more renovation deals. If you're a wholesaler, you have a deal that, you're, that you have you're trying to sell. Um, my cards are on the back table, or you can just call me directly to my cell, 410. 207-1151. Um, if you have a deal or a seller you're talking to and you're not sure if what you have is a deal and you want somebody to come with you and look at it, it's going to tell you what they'll give you for it. I've done it with a few people in this room already. I'm happy to come out and tell, give you an idea what I'll give you. As long as I get first shot at the deal, I'm happy to take my time and walk you through what you see and what I think about it, and even what I would, you know, what I would give you for it. So it's part of um, how I do business. Um, also, on the back table, there's a bunch of these flyers, and in the middle of the tables, kind of tells you what I'm looking for, where I'm looking for deals, zip codes, how to contact me, um, my websites and stuff. So, um, anyways, always looking for stuff. Um, there's a couple little flyers on the tables and chairs, the REI Pro postcards and the um, Investor Care websites. If anybody doesn't have a website, Investor Care is like a made-for-you website where you, you pay a, a monthly fee, but the website's already set up and you kind of customize it yourself. It's very easy, very user-friendly. If you don't have a website or you want to get another website, Investor Care stuff is uh, on the chairs. REI Pro I've been using for a few years now. I've been using it a lot more lately. It's very interesting. There's a lot of tools in it. I don't know. Does anybody here use REI Pro? Nobody. Okay. Got a couple hands up, kind of five or six maybe. Um, we are, REI Pro does offer a 30 day free trial. So if you want to try it out and see what they can do, um, the postcards are there. So I've got to get to the website. Um, also, we do have uh, sponsorship. So part of the way that the bills get paid is through selling sponsorships. Um, we offer like just two different kinds of sponsorship opportunities to people. Um, a yearly sponsorship or a, um, like a one-time yearly sponsorship or uh, some uh, specific events. That you, you can like be the host of the events and you're a sponsor. And we do market you and as you can see the flyers popping up. This is a new sponsor we just got. Now we have the tree. Um, so we have sponsorship opportunities available. If you're interested, there's flyers on the back table. The ladies out front can tell you a lot more about it. And we can send you like a, a package for the sponsorship to, to um, explain what it is and what it costs and all that kind of stuff. 
So I just ask and we're happy to give it to you. Um, I think that's about it for me. Um, if anybody needs cards or flyers, or all over that table. And, oh, Alyssa. <laughs> we have a door prize drawn. Somebody grab, can somebody go out and grab the, the goldfish bowl, please? Um, oh, look, my God, thank you. There's, there's, <laughs> so. It's Saturday. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's coming up, I forgot all about it. We are, um, so, the BWI Meetup, the Baltimore RIA, which is a club in Towson, and Rehabber Pro, um, which is another um, rehab group. We're all doing a cookout together. The three, three different clubs are all doing a cookout together. It's actually this Sunday. It's free. It's um, in like Woodlawn, John Cape Road. It's a pick-all area. Um, there are flyers in the back, or it's actually on our primary website link. Um, we're just in, we're not charging for people to come to it. We're just kind of asking people to bring a dessert or bring something. You know, we're supplying hot dogs and hamburgers and that kind of stuff. So it, we've never done an event like this where the three of us kind of come together and do it, but. We all get along well, and um, it seems like a neat thing to do. People, people kind of like the idea. But if anybody can make it someday, or uh, it's twelve to the four flyers in the back. Uh, we are doing the door prize drawing. Look, I'm not going to pick it. I'm going to mix them up. This gentleman right here looks like he wants to pick the card for us. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you do. So we're um, we give away door prizes most meetings. So tonight we're giving away a VIP membership. It's a hundred and fifty dollar value. Get you some go to this. Early England. Early England. Hey, there you go. <laughs> you can just give the ladies out front your membership and we'll get you signed up. So um, it's a hundred and fifty dollar value. Sponsor of VIP membership, besides the fact that it helps the club, you know, supports the helps us support the club, it also lets you come up and do a quick pitch, like if you have property you want to sell or you know you're you want to talk about what you do as a VIP member you're allowed to come up and form the pitch so and um, it does get you some discounts and some other um, uh, events that we do. Thanks everyone for coming. I'm gonna turn it over to Thomas. I don't know how to even introduce you. I don't have the you didn't give me the bio. You don't need it. All right. <laughs> Going to Thomas. I purposely didn't give Bill a long, lengthy bio because I want this to be more of an interactive meeting between myself and you all. Be open, raw. The, there are no housekeeping rules. If you see something, you have a question about it, stop me right in the middle. We can discuss it right then. I have a lot of slides with a lot of writing on it. I may or may not go through all of those slides or read them to you because I want you to be able to pick out the things that interest you the most. That way we can dive right into that and get some understanding out of it. That good for everyone? Yep. That don't, that, I heard two people say yeah. <laughs> if you're not gonna be interactive, why be here? Is that good for everyone? Yes. yes. That's a little bit better. Because you get, you get out what you put into it. If you come and you're sleepy and you're tired, go home. You're not going to get anything out of it, and it won't hurt my feelings because I'm going to present to one person the same way I present to a thousand. So you're getting the impact from this, not me. We good? We good. Yeah. Yeah. Now, everybody knows that when you try to use something in technology, it's liable to fail. <laughs> so we'll see if this works. Business automation. How many new people do we have here tonight? Brand new. Good. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Can we give the new people a round of applause? So if you're new, how many people are here to do wholesale? Okay. Wait, you so said if you're new? Yeah, if you're new. Okay. If you're new, how many of you are coming to do wholesale? Rehabbing? Lending? You're not new, though. <laughs> it doesn't matter what your business is. You can automate your business so you can go from doing one deal a month to 20 deals a month. You can't do that doing it on your own and by yourself. So the first 
presentation. I actually have two, which is why I said there are a lot of slides. The first one is going to go into the mindset, because I believe that what's lacking today is the psychology of business. Nobody teaches that. If you don't go to business school, you don't get it. So you think that I can just jump up, I can automate my business, and then when you fail or when you get set back, you wonder why. And it's because you didn't have all of the tools in order to set the business up and to move forward. So we're, let's get started. Oh, it worked. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a good day. <laughs> it's going to be a good night. How far do you want your business to go? How long would you like it to last? For me, I wanted to create a business that I could pass down to my children to give them a choice of whether or not they want to work in my businesses or not. And it's just an option. They don't have to do it if they don't want to work in it. Hopefully, I've automated it enough to where I can turn it over and still get their residual income. So like myself, uh, in the beginning, I was sitting around for months and years doing all the work, all the thinking, putting it together, trying to figure out where I'm going next, trying to scale the business, but I couldn't do it because I was working on and in the business at the same time. You can't do both. You cannot be out driving for dollars and then visualizing how to make it go further and do that consistently. You can do it for a little while until it's time for you to be able to just offshore some of those tasks. If you don't, you get stuck, and it's just a tired cycle. What would your current situation be if you could step away from it? If you could look from the top down to your business and just put a bird's eye view on it? In the next hour and a half, I'll tell you how I did that. I don't have a rag to riches story. We didn't have everything growing up, but we had enough. I went from zero units managed in my property management business to over 100 in less than a year. I was working a full-time job. A lot of people didn't know in the beginning that I worked a full-time job, a lot of my clients. One client called me and he said, I can never get in touch with you in the daytime. And I said, well, that's because I'm at work. <laughs> you won't get in touch with me. And the point of that was the business was going smooth. It was rolling. Things were getting handled. Tenants were able to place their maintenance calls. We were responding. Owners getting paid. Rents getting paid. Well or machine. I'm not doing all the work. Some people didn't like that. They wanted to talk to me. How many of you can call your bank today and talk to the president of the bank? Anybody's name? Well, how long have you had that relationship? <laughs> long, time. long time. Who knows the general manager of your local McDonald's? Anybody? <coughs> Normally, you do not talk to the owner or the president of a company on a day-to-day -day basis. You don't. There are very few businesses, and most of them are in real estate, because we're one-man, two-man shops where you can call and talk to the guy in charge. That's not a scale business. If you have 10 loans out with Joe, Joe goes on vacation for two years, who's going to handle the business? Joe's gone. So you must automate. No matter how big or small your business is, to run it smoothly and successfully, you have to have consistent, reliable, positive, motivated, and passionate, and team-oriented people. And then you have to have people with integrity. That's a hard part in this business. I can't tell you how many clients I have that come to me and say, hey, my property manager took the first three months of my rent and I can't find him. Mm -hmm. I don't know where he went. Or I can't call him. And I was like, does he have a business? Do you look at that stat for his business? Like, oh, he doesn't even have a business. Oh. So people aren't even doing background checks. And you know, all of you know with contractors, they'll start a job, they'll leave a job. They'll take your money and go do another job. So it happens. So when you're finding people, look for people with integrity that will do as they say. And that's really how I scaled my business and got so many clients was because I was doing exactly what I said I was going to do. I failed in my first few attempts. I remember my first virtual assistant, I created a small packet for them to do. I gave them that packet. I said, hey, do all these tasks. And I didn't tell them anything else. They didn't do the tasks. I thought that they would go through and do them specifically how I asked, but it didn't happen. Because everyone on your team is not going to operate at that high level. You have to work through those people, person after person. So that's what I did. I understand that 
the definition of successful automation is a key of duplication. Imagine what you could do if there were two, three, four, or even a hundred of you. How much more business you could be doing. How many more driving for dollars you could be doing. How many people are in those cars. I remember riding with Ned Carey around Baltimore City looking at properties for tax liens. It was me and him and my wife in the car. Imagine if there were eight Neds or people were on Ned's team that were driving all over the state. Ned can only drive certain neighborhoods on his own. But if you had four, five, six people, duplicates of himself doing that, how much more would his business scale? He can go from doing the million dollars that he does a day to a hundred million a day. <laughs> okay. So what can you automate? Things in the business that others can do, not just things that you are comfortable delegating. I had a conversation with a gentleman earlier who just had to pull the trigger or automate. You want to automate things that other people can do, not just what you're comfortable at giving them. I had a hard time with that because I'm kind of a control person. I want all the pieces. That's why I'm a licensed realtor, licensed contractor, and the owner of the company. Because I want all the pieces where I can control them. I don't have to rely on anybody else. But I was bogging myself down because when somebody called and they wanted a contractor to come out, well, I can't do that right now, I'm at work. Or I can't get that paperwork right now because I'm doing something else. So I didn't want to let go of certain pieces of the business. But when I did that, I was able to scale up much faster. Tasks that take a lot of your time and effort doing. Data entry. No one in this room should be doing data entry at all. That's not a best use of your time. It's not the highest level. Any of the repetitive processes within the business. So for property management, when you place a property for rent, you're gonna get a lot of leads coming in, a lot of calls. Those are repetitive. I should not be on the phone all day long answering those calls. I'll show that to a VA. Anything that causes pressure, because stress strike stifles most of your creativity. Delegate any task that can cause you, cause you stress. Not money making ones though. You don't want to delegate those. <laughs> Everything else though. What you cannot automate, business processes that require analysis. That's part of growing a business. You must analyze that part. You are the, the buck stops with you. You're the captain of the ship. You need to analyze the route, the path, the vision. Business processes that require major, major decisions. If I'm going to partner up with Ian and buy a $20 million apartment complex, I can't automate that to my virtual assistant and say, hey, let me know what you think about this deal. Business processes that involve huge sum of money or risk. Never delegate those. Tasks that you alone must accomplish, which are your visionary tasks. Where am I going to be from five, 10, 15, 20 years. So the principle of automation are your business processes. That is really what makes a business. If you go to McDonald's and have a manual, when you, has anybody worked fast food? Okay, so when you go in there, they give you a booklet. Or they should give you a booklet, and this is how long you put the fries in the fryer. Five minutes and 32 seconds. This is how long the burgers stay in the burger flip. Those are business processes and manuals that the company has created that are tried and true and they work. There's no reason for you to go in there and say, I can do it better. McDonald's is a big and served. They don't need you to come tell them that you can make a burger better than they can make one for cheap. So you want to know and identify the task category and the important level of your business. For me, my VAs know what's important day to day, what to do first, check the voicemail. Are there any maintenance requests? Are there new requests for properties to come in? Do we have any communication from clients that reached out to us, we provide a packet to, did they contact us back? You need to know the tools needed to do automation. In my second presentation, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper in that. You need to know people involved, clients, virtual assistants, tenants, applicants, the city, I get all kind of calls from the city. I never answer them. They always go to the VA. And you need to know your repetitive, time-consuming, and equally important day-to-day -day tasks. When you have identified the tasks in their important level, 
you can now begin to automate your business. Before you sit down and do that, you cannot automate your business. You can't say, I'm going to automate my business tomorrow, but you don't know what's going on in the business. You can't know what's going on in the business if you're running around on the street trying to do the business. So it kind of all boils down and works together. Hyper productivity, fast track progress, strategic use of time and effort is what you gain from automating your business. Now before you get that wrong idea, most people try to automate their business so they can free up time and go on a vacation. My business is automated, I'm going to Tahiti for six months. I'm not doing anything else. That is not the only mindset to adapt. While it's okay to vacation and you're ready to go, you must automate your business for the purpose of putting your success in the fast lane, for building a business that can grow without you. Every day, looking at it, putting your hands on it, and making changes. Your business should be able to operate. I could probably go a week, maybe two, without even looking at the property management business. And I mean looking at it, period. The, the times I need to look at are the first of the month through the fifth when rent comes in, and so I can pay the owners by the 10th. After the 10th, I don't have to look at it anymore until the next time the month rolls through. Five mortal sins of today's entrepreneur. Maintaining the balance between work and life. It sounds good to beat the pavement 80 hours a week, but where does that leave you in your home life? Is your family still gonna be there? I don't care how rich you are, if you're not there for your family, your kids will let you know. I go to probably three meetings a month, and every time I go, my son acts like I've been gone for ages. Like, you always go to me, and I go to three a month. So he, he notices. If you're a startup, and you usually don't have much choice, you try to learn how to do it all, and do everything, and learn, and you may not accomplish anything at all. I was in that same boat. I was trying to learn wholesaling, property management, being a realtor, all of that, and I was getting minor micro successes. I do a deal here, but nothing was scaling because I was jumping from the next thing trying to learn it all. By the time I did learn it, I was exhausted. How many people here have known that I quit property management about six times? <laughs> quit, I'm done, I can't do it anymore because I was exhausted. I got into a lot of units, started having issues, didn't put enough time in automating it, passing off those things, I was trying to take care of it all. Getting a maintenance call on the weekend, hate that. Maintenance calls don't come until Saturday after 8 p.m. That's when people notice that things are broke in the house. So I quit. I think I quit last week. But I'm back again. <laughs> <in. laughs> yeah, I did. So let's say you find your way on your own and you did it. You actually made it. Success. But how do your loved ones feel? How's your health? Were all the benefits and hard work worth it? What you give up? Two, failure to create strong business plans, schedules, and processes. I don't know how many people come and tell you that they started a business. You ask them, do you have a plan, business plan? Nope. Don't even know how to put one together. You're not credible without a business plan. I don't want anyone coming up to me telling me I got an idea that'll make us $100 million, and I say, well, where's the plan? There's no plan. So I'm going off on the strength of your word, something that you haven't done before. I was prior military. There's nothing that we do that didn't have a plan, a schedule, and a process. They call SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. You get one wherever you go. And if you don't have one in that shop, somebody's going to be creating it. A good profitable company, all this depends on excellent planning, scheduling, and execution. Your business process output is the core of your entire operation. Three, procrastination and fear. The same person I talked to earlier. Procrastinating. Procrastinating will usually say no to good opportunities by waiting around or overanalyzing. I told you I had a slide just for you. I ain't gonna call them out though. No. Just keep looking at them. <laughs> if you cannot decide, it's because you lack the facts, analytics, and the will to execute. A lot of this is will. It's the will to get down and get dirty and doing what you need to do to automate your business. And it's, this part may seem dry and long and drawn out, but nuts and bolts things are. Mechanics don't have an exciting job. But if they didn't do their job and you go down the street and your tires fall off, you'll be upset. 
but you won't go in there and say, oh, this is a glamorous job. I get high fives everywhere. It's not about that. Don't be the person five, ten years from now looking back wishing they had done differently. Oh, if only I would have listened to that gentleman talking about business automation and put some of it in practice. Where could I be? The fear of evolving from your old ways will give you old returns. Doing the same thing over and over and over. I'm just going to beat the pavement as hard as I can. But you never really achieve or get anywhere. If you want to succeed, you have to break number three from your habits. Micromanaging. Are you a long ranger and have been doing all the work yourself? That's me. I still kind of micromanage the business because I get all the emails. I, the way I set it up is any email my assistants send out, if you respond to it, I'm going to see it. And I do it for checks and balances to make sure things are getting answered and they're the proper answer and then I'm just things flying off the cuff. But doing that chokes your own growth because while I'm doing it, I can't look at something else. You said participate, so I've got a question for you. What do you do with those emails when they come in? Do you, do you archive them? Do you delete them when you've looked at them? Delete. Keep track? Just delete. Them. So I have a thing where I have to keep 50 <coughs> emails at most in my inbox. If it goes over 50, I'm going to have a panic attack. And I don't know I'm going to have a panic attack, but I hate to see a lot of emails. It just feels like unresolved stuff. So after I read them, I check. I say, okay, you did that. You answered it right. We're good to go. Delete. There are some things that I can't delete that I archive off, but they're not in my inbox, so I don't see them. But I probably have 20 emails in my archive because I try to keep the junk out. A lot of emails are junk. So the successful have trust in the process of task delegation, and you should too. You cannot be all over the place and try something new at the same time. Your time is the most valuable of all the people within the business. You're the CEO. You're the boss. Your time is what matters. If you're not steering the ship, it goes off course, you crash. It'll allow you to train, evolve, identify, employ, and execute what needs to be done and convert yourself from a CEO to a 1-0 to a CEO to 6. Who wants to be a millionaire? It's hard to do it if you're not automated. Number five, focus. As an entrepreneur wanted to do multiple things at the same time and wanted to jump ship after another shiny idea will lead nowhere but a loop of pre-success. Nobody's saying that you won't get a deal or two or three or maybe even ten. What I'm saying is over the length of time, 20, 30 years, where are you? How many contractors have you known that did great business? Where are they now? How many investors are from the 2008 period that are here now? A couple. So where are the rest of those people? Out of business. It's because automation, not focusing enough, not enough preparation, not enough rain date. I'm making all the money right now. I don't need to think about the future. The future came and got it. Now they're sitting at McDonald's. Focus on one thing at a time will help you evaluate more accurately, think and act quicker on items that need to be resolved within the business. So I have a task list of what I focus on every day with the business. I know exactly what I'm going in, what I'm looking for, and once I check that list, like today, I probably spent an hour and a half doing business things, and then I was done for the day. And half of that was looking at this PowerPoint and, and tweaking it. Your success was, depends on how laser focused you are. Entrepreneurial responsibilities. Every business has its downtime and has a reason. <laughs> Can someone share a top reason or two that almost turned your business upside down? Yeah. <laughs> You've been in the game long enough? Yeah, just uh, uh, you know, real estate crash and then some, some personal issues and just a bunch of personal things and deaths of close people who uh, happened in short order. And business kept running though, didn't it? But you have a partner. Not them. Come on, man. You got to help me out. <laughs> I know a little bit of Ned's story. Ned does a high level, high level business. Had a partner now, has Absolutely. one, and makes it better. Absolutely. And me and Ned have talked about automation before. And virtual systems, do you have one? Uh, 
Yeah, sort of. See? <laughs> I'm gonna pick somebody else next time. <laughs> Tyrus, that's why I'm here. Yeah, let me down. <laughs> Everything rises and falls on leadership. We all know that. Coming to success is defined by top three elements: the CEO leadership team, systems and processes, good employees. Set your company to run like a well oiled machine. Routinely doing actions based on, based from its program sets of protocols. Everything in my business has an SOP. There's nothing. If I hire one of you today, you'll be ready to start working tomorrow. We'll train you a little bit. We'll go over it. And I'll put you out there and say, read this, do this. It'll work, and it'll work for you. I have videos. I have all of that, so you wouldn't be lost. You need to find the best and highest use of your time. Always the twenty percent. That's where your focus should be. And any realtors in the room? Keller Williams? 20%. That's what the game, that's what we talk about. <clears throat> the commands you need to execute are the ones that will make you money. It is your job to obtain knowledge and growth in all aspects of the business and to distribute that to the rest of the tree below. Real quick at a high level, what's this 20%? What's your business? What's my purpose? Yeah. <laughs> Go wholesale. So, what makes you money in wholesale? Uh, I guess communication. Leads. leads so, your 20% will be focused on lead generation. Not necessarily answering all the phone calls. You want to generate those leads. Yeah, the formal name is called the Freedom Principle. 80% of the effort. You have 20% of the effort. Correct. Typically, it's it's negotiating is part of the top twenty percent. Right. And what's not part of the top twenty percent because I didn't listen to you before <laughs> was uh, you know, things like bookkeeping. Right. You know, it's like I, I'm I'm entering the checks in QuickBooks. I shouldn't be doing. Exactly. How many of you have an accountant? Bookkeeper. You need one. Once your business hits a certain level, you don't need to be doing that anymore. You, you're taking time away from your 20% by spending two hours putting in receipts, tracking receipts. See, I knew that microphone was going to start cutting in and out. Now, I'm going to bring up the next PowerPoint, and we're going to go into the nuts and bolts of my property management business so you can kind of see how it works. Now that we got all the boring theory stuff out of the way, because some of you look like you just you're about to go. That's all right. Whenever I was in, uh, when I was in basic training, whenever you got sleepy, they'd make you stand up. So I'm going to start telling people to stand up here in a minute. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. Any more questions while we're changing over? Thoughts? Who in here has an automated business? Working on it. Working on it? Yes, sir. So system and processes. How I automated my business, businesses, and right now how we're doing a high level of what we do is through virtual assistants. So my team is in the Philippines. A lot of people don't know that when they talk to them, but that is where they are and they really run my business. The perfect signs of combining systems, processes, and assistants can actually help you get there faster and with ease probably heard about virtual assistants. Who hasn't heard about a virtual assistant? Okay, so basically what it is, is just a person that is virtual from you. They can be in the Philippines, India, those are two of the largest places, but all over the country. I've had US-based virtual assistants. I used to use an attorney in California to review documents because she was a little bit cheaper than here. So if you have a financial bandwidth, if you have the bandwidth, you can set up office and build a local team. However, you have overhead costs from that. You have to pay minimum wage from the United States perspective. And then in Maryland, seven dollars ain't making anybody wake out of the bed unless they necessarily have to. Or seven twenty five, whatever it is. This presentation will show you how I do that. Free up your time by answering all income and calls from customers, tenants, Direct mail recipients, vendors, angry callers, and more. 
I rarely take a phone call. <clears throat> rarely. And it's somehow because somebody got my number and I don't know where they got it from. So it's going to be a sticker shop. I pay $8 an hour. Well, I'm going to tell you why. That's two of them. So they're four piece. And that includes a managing VA on top of it. So they're breaking that down in between them all. Who said that was high? <laughs> How much do you want to pay for a VA? Enough to get it done correctly. How much do you think that is? <laughs> so if you haven't hired a VA to do that. Yeah, I have. I've actually worked at companies that provide that service. What's the cheapest that you pay? It depends. <laughs> yeah, give me a Philippine rate for just that's about twelve rates, around right? four bucks. Four bucks. What I found out that most of the time when you hire a cheap VA, you get cheap work. How many team? How many people on your team of VAs, or how many people usually you work with? So you use a hundred VAs. I said I did this when I was at a company where we provided a service. Right, that's something that's outsourced. Right, a larger company like Microsoft. So for smaller businesses that don't have the capital and bandwidth to hire hundred VAs, you usually work around with one or two. If you don't know how to train them properly, they're not going to get the work done. What happens is most people create something or they don't create anything at all and they just throw to the VA and say, hey, I want you to take all the phone calls. And the VA is like, what, what do you want me to say? So you type up 10 questions. If that is, isn't on the list for a $2 an hour VA, they're not doing any more of trying to figure that out. So don't go for the cheapest route. A big company like Microsoft can pull the weight and say, hey, we're gonna pay you cheaper, get it done, but for the lower end, where we are, we can't do that. So don't go for the cheapest rate of the VA. I pay my VA as well. My VAs get bonuses. I treat them like a family. They get all U.S. holidays off paid. And I pay them for their holidays. Because when I win, they win, we all win. And they want to come to work every day. Because when you have a VA that you don't treat like that, they take your business and they run. You get here. So they work night shift. Our day shift is their night, so they work night shift. So there's no factor. My VAs are 8.30 to 5, 6 o'clock Eastern time. So one of uh, Upwork's big things is that uh, you use their service and you don't have to uh, deal with W-2s or whatever. I'm assuming that you don't, uh, you're don't. not going through Upwork if you're paying them $4 an hour in top notch. So um, do you have to do W-2s and stuff like that? Independent contractors. Excellent. VAs can do all your administrative work. My VAs enter everything for me. They enter water bills that the owners send. They put them in the right folders. Only thing I do is pay the water bill because I want the finances handled here. So I don't want it to, them to have money over there. So Tyrus, your budget, you're about 60 bucks a day, right? Eight, yeah. eight, eight hours, eight bucks, yeah. 65 bucks a day. Five days a week? Yeah. Okay. Rolling it on. And I, I paid them when I didn't have the money to pay them. I had to pull it from other resources because I, I knew where we were going. Same thing with my property management software, Appfolio. When I had just a few units starting off, I paid that $200 a month minimum when I didn't have the units. But when I got to 100 and it started to pay off, I didn't have to say, oh, now I got to catch up and figure out how to do all this stuff now that I'm big. I built my business from the beginning to scale, whether it was money out of my pocket or not. Are there any books or courses that teach all this? Because yeah, you can go to all of the courses that they sell, the people automate your business, <laughs> and what they're gonna do is charge you $1,497, and they're gonna give you a stack of 20 tablets that won't tell you how to do any of this. So, no. I, I haven't seen one that truly shows you how to build it. Now, if you go get a consultant, Somebody's going to sit down with you. They will walk you through this. But as far as just a straight class or packet, it's too much and it's business specific. Like I need to know your business. I need to sit down with you. You can't take a process I built for a rehabber if you're trying to do landlord. 
they're out there. A lot of people try to set up a class, but they don't teach you anything. Set appointments and manage their calendar. This works well with our wholesalers. So if we partner with someone, we'll split the VAs. They will call, do the preliminary works of the property. Then they will look at the calendar of the person that's going out, set the appointment with the seller, potential seller, and our street guy. That's all, all you gotta do is look at the calendar. You got appointments on there. Coordinate transactions, track leads, and other tasks. Depending on your business needs, I'd rather have 1% of uh, effort of 100 men more than 100% effort of my own. Types of virtual assistants, administrative VA. I have one VA that does nothing but do what I ask her to do all day long. Hey, I need this done. Today it was, hey, I need a list of all our properties, tenants' names, phone numbers, because we need to do quarterly inspections. You may or may not be able to pull it from that folio pretty, but when I get it, I want it to be nice and pretty. Phone VA answers all the phone calls. Takes in all leasing calls, all owner calls. General VA, that kind of varies and ranges. If I have special tasks that need to be done, General VA will do that. Because I use eight VAs. We cycle through and we have a team. Technical and social media VA. How many of you saw the VWI meetup post with my automation thing on there? VA. I'm not doing it. I'm not sitting there. Bill's not doing it the whole day, sitting around, posting. The VA does that. Who do you think made the flyer? <laughs> VA. Really? If you really want to get specific, who do you think made these two PowerPoints? <laughs> <laughs> no lie. That's the truth. VA. My lead VA made both of these. All I did was, he knows enough about my business since we've been working together since 2014 to put together a presentation that he knew how I operated. He made both of these. All I did was review them today. <coughs> if you're lucky, you may find one who can do it all. My lead VA can do all of these things. All he does is delegate now, though, because we're building a business around him. So you, he can bring in more people to hire and to build a company. How do we store? Google Drive. Share it with everybody. You can't hardly see this, but what this is, is in our property management folder, folder there's a list of property or owner names across the top. Every owner we got, their name is across the top. Under their name, is their property name by address. Each property has its own distinctive folder. We're not mixing them. Subfolders that go on to every property. There's no sense in marrying everything and mixing it up. Every property has all of these subfolders. That way, and their data is specific too. They're dated by year, month, day, whatever kind of document it is, address. So I can go and Google it. I can just type what I'm looking for and it'll pop right up. So I'm not looking for it. Or search him. Right. Henry Wright, you said every property has a folder for each of these things? Yeah, every property has all these folders. And they're dated by year. So I can go back to 2014 when I started. I have all the documents. So. So you want to invest in something like this so you never lose the paperwork. Because it's important. I've had owners come back to me when Section 8 said something. They were like, so when did this tenant move in? When did they move out? Because they're arguing the eviction. Do you have the? Lead cert. Lead cert. Do you have the, um, the eviction notice signed by the sheriff? Because once they're signed by the sheriff, I get it, I scan it, I put it in a folder. Section 8. It's up there. How do you handle the fact that I'm familiar with Google Drive and, and Google Storage and things like that? Does all your VAs, do you have multiple accounts, i.e., your account? Each one of your VAs have an account so you can actually audit and track who has gone into each folder? Yes. So I have my Smart account. Smart businessman. 
So I have my account, I have the info account, and I have the admin account, I have the leasing account. So those are my accounts under the Google Drive. So if any of those folders, some of them could even be empty or just have one, one document. Right, but they, are, they get created every time it's a part of the process. When we get a new property to come in, the VA gets the set up new property checklist. They know that all of that has to go in there. And every now and then they may miss one because I'm going to go through there and I'm going to check. But 99.9% of the time they won't miss it. So we use Ring Central for our phone. There are very few people that I communicate with that has my personal cell phone number because I only give it out to family. A lot of people did not. I think you asked me that one time. I don't have your cell phone number. It's a business line. Yep, it's a business line. All of my VAs have their own extension that you can call. I like Ring Central because they can all text. We can send picture messages. That was just recently done by them. Get faxes through Ring Central. Video conferences through, through Ring Central. So I do a Friday meeting with the VAs and we do a video conference together. I try to plan what we're gonna do next week, where we're going. That way I can see them, I'm real to them. They can see me. Ring Central? I'm not familiar with that. 35 a month. Per month. Yeah. It's 30 something. I pay, I think, 56, 50 dollars. 45 dollars a month. Yeah. So it's 45, yeah. 50 bucks a month? Yep. And, and it, per user, right? Right. It's just an aggregate. All your VAs and you. And it's your, it's the business number. Correct. And so if I call your business, somebody answers and I say, I want to talk to the property management department. That's all. Right. Through right. To your right. It has an IVR, so if you call just the main line, it's going to tell you one extension, one hundred one, talk to the realtor, which is me. I'm not going to answer, but extension one hundred one, then one hundred two. To get to you, they got to go through the VAs. If you go directly through, or you have my main number, it will go to me. What I'm going to do is when I get the email or the voicemail, I'm going to send it to them. And then they're going to listen to it and they're going to tell me who it is and what they want. So it automatically generates an email. An email. Yes. 50 bucks a month. Yep. And then my wife has one for her business and we tied them into this Ring Central, but it's a separate digital line so it's not married. Like if you call her number directly, you're not going to get the property management, even though it's kind of grouped up for us. Because they create all of her marketing materials too. Google products, mail, drive. We use Hangouts to talk, chat. Appfolio is what I use for property management. Asana is a pro project management app that I used early on with the VAs, and that's where I would just assign tasks. It's just a task assigning software. So, hey, go do this, but now we use Hangouts more. It cuts down time, because most of it's automated, so I don't have to tell them what to do every day. So I don't have to use Asana as much as we used to. And we also use that with wholesale. Podio is one of your largest CRMs for wholesaling lead transactions. Investor Fuse takes Podio automation because if you are a big time wholesaler and you use Podio, you eventually want to get to automating those tasks. Put in a property, you want to autom automatic email generated, sent out, or you want an automated contract to be sent out. That's what Investor for Use does. You got a question? Uh, I actually want to go back for a second. Uh, right now. That page? Yeah. No problem. So we'll hold here for a second. Any more questions for right now? No. What does uh, uh, Investor Fuse do as opposed to uh, Globy? Glo 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 Same thing. Same. It's similar. I think Investor Fuse was made by somebody else. Like the task are set up already for you. Globy flow, you have to do it. Set it up. As I went on, I figured out, okay, for Asana, I was like, I'm emailing you what to do. 
I need something that I can put in that everybody can be in at one time and that will send emails out automatically. So and that's that's how I did it. Did they have, did uh, Dojo help you with that process? Kind no. Of, you know, I don't know what I don't I don't no. know what I don't know. So in a unique perspective for me, systems is kind of my thing. So when I brought them on, I had already created everything that they needed. And I'll explain a little bit about that a little bit more. I don't have any of that on this PowerPoint. But I explain what I mean. So look, I have a question. Um, if I'm like a, a new new to real estate, uh, wholesaler, or doing my first rehab, you know, I'm thinking like I'm, I'm well beyond that, of course. But I'm thinking, do I need all this stuff? Um, do brand new. What do I need if I'm just starting in real estate? If you're just starting real estate, you need wheel. And you need to come out to a networking meetup so you know where you're going. And from there, you will learn the tools. It's like, okay, I'm driving for dollars. I'm not getting anything. Why? Or I can't answer all these phone calls. How many wholesalers in here, active wholesalers, have a voice mailbox on your number that you sent out on the mailings? So everybody in here that's wholesaling, you answer every call? Because every time I call a number, it goes straight to voicemail. Nothing makes me worse than I just don't like it. Like I'm just thinking, like, people that are new here, this is, seems like high-level stuff to me. Like, you know, I need to manage a team of people when I'm just trying to do one project. Start with one. <laughs> I, I, um, like, I use, I, I use Packard as a call center. you up and 
You got to try to put it in the right spaces and it all gets off fillable blanks. You can't miss it. Do you do any uh, like DocuSign kind of stuff? Have DocuSign as well. Once I, I used to use Adobe, but I didn't like it for signing purposes, but I use DocuSign. After it's created in Adobe, we upload it to DocuSign and then send it out for electronic signatures. I don't like the paper. Dropbox for sharing large files to people you work with. We only use Dropbox mainly for pictures. Um, my property pictures are in Google Drive, but I have other pictures in Dropbox. Why, why would you have both? So I started with Dropbox. Dropbox doesn't let you do what Google Drive lets you do in regards to documents. And then when Google first started with their whole drive thing, their pictures and photos was not on the level of Dropbox. So it just didn't work at that time. It's getting better, but you stay with old habits. I keep it. Dropbox changed it. You know, if you have to create accounts, can you actually download the document? Or do you actually still have to have the page account? I think you can download it. Yeah, you can download it with a free account. You can't track changes and do all of that, though. Sample process still for direct mail. You get a direct mail campaign. You market it. If you can't see it, the lead calls, goes to the phone system, ring central. Virtual Pro Team takes the call. They do the phase one evaluation. They run the comps. They send it to me. I do the final evaluation through MLS. Goes into the CRM, Podio, Asana, whatever you're using. That's supposed to be the, our street guy goes and sees the property, not client, but our street guy, because after we put in the CRM, that's when it's scheduled. It's ready to be seen, check for repairs, needed. We're either interested, if we're interested, no, go on the back burner, we may be interested later. Maybe they asking for too much, and we need to drop our, wait until they drop the price, wait them out. Maybe they're not ready yet. To probate them, they need a little bit of time. But if they are interested, we put it on the contract, we look at the extra exit strategy, sold, if it's no, we go to the next deal. If it's yes, we get the profit, we put it back in the market. That's kind of how that flow chart works. I don't get involved until the final evaluation. And I probably don't get involved again until put property on the contract. If I do that, it depends on who I'm partnering with at the time. If I partner with uh, somebody who knows what they're doing, they can do that. Thank you for showing that diagram. Because you can't walk into a thing if you can't describe it right. Right. That's business processes. That's business planning. So for the marketing, automation, pulling lists, composing letters are just two parts of that. Is what happens after the letters have been mailed that you need to automate the most. I mean, my VA at this point, he can pull the list because he knows where I have a zip code sheet in Google Drive that he goes and he can pull the list. He can go to yellowletter.com and put the order in. All I got to do is pay for it. The VA does pretty much all the back end work, job, screening, and you have to have, this is another thing that if you want a $2 VA, do you trust them or have they been trained enough to screen properties for Baltimore area and they're not here? My VAs have been trained to do that for this market, this location. They know the numbers here. There are tools online that you'll need to incorporate. We went through that. Well-rounded virtual assistant should be able to handle it. Well-rounded, good, highly paid. You said they've been trained to do that. Did you train them? The very first VA, my lead VA now was not trained by me, he was trained by Kennedy Mills. And he, Kennedy was my mentor that passed away for you guys who don't know. He's a co-founder of this meetup. Passed away a couple of years ago. He trained the first one. The very first VA. He built the onset of the team. And then when I came into this area, because I'm not from here, I got with Kennedy and Bill a long time ago. And Kenny became my mentor because we both had a knack for processes. So I was introduced to Rob at that point, the lead VA. And from there, we worked together since then. Property management, I trained them on myself because they weren't doing it. They were just doing straight wholesale. And then after Kenny passed away, 
I took on that position of being and keeping and staying with them. So here's some calls made by Lee Viet. Hopefully it plays decent. Hello? Yes, Ms. Hi, good afternoon. Yeah. This is Rob. Yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you I'm very much. I'm doing good. <laughs> well, that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> Ma'am, I am just returning your phone call. I do apologize. We got the quote already, and it is for $150. Now, here's the thing. The price may increase if there are more trash or different items than the original list. Right. Okay. I understand. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So, do we uh, move forward with that, or... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, whoever you have doing that, I guess said his handyman could do it. Yes, ma'am. You know, but he'd have to bill us yes. or whatever. Correct. Just uh, tell him to give him our mailing address or my email if he wants to scan it in and email it to me. Okay. Not a problem. Mr. Whichever is easiest for him. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Will do. All right, I will be informing so that he can inform the handyman with regards to the billing situation. Do you have like a PayPal account or do you have an electric? So that goes on for about six more minutes of them because then she, that's one of my property management clients. Then she came and she asked where we taking more properties on. This was at a time where I quit. <laughs> so I wasn't taking on any new properties and she was asking that question, well, what do you think? And, that's the conversation that he had. How you Ray Central records automatically all incoming inbound calls. And then we have on the spot calling as well. So when you call our line, it's going to tell you that it's recorded. And that's for training purposes. <laughs> that's your lead VA? Yes. Yes. No. So that's another thing that you pay for. Accents. Can you get a $2 VA that sounds like that? It's something to think about. It sounds better than Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been there. I tried to go the cheap route and hire a VA in India. And his accent was so thick I couldn't understand what he was saying. That would, that doesn't work for direct mail. When you have a hundred people calling you from a thousand letter campaign and they're trying to ask them about the property and the syntax and the grammar isn't correct, I mean, it gets frustrating. And people know at that point, they're like, okay, you're not even here. So when you don't have that question in your mind, you're able to do a little bit better. And you pay that cost, just like, with um, our translation business, if we want a Spanish-speaking VA, I gotta pay for that skill. For a Filipino, they can speak Spanish. I'm not gonna get that for $2, or $3, or $4 an hour. We have a call center in South Carolina. And we have a <laughs> That's the country. That's the southern hospitality. That's right. right. So the uh, the direct mail uh, phone calls is it twenty four seven phone calls or is it just it's nine to five business hours. Sometimes we will lengthen that if we feel like we can't catch people at home. Like if they get home late from work, we may push it to eight o'clock or start it earlier because there I cannot ever remember who did the study, but. They did research on marketing calls, and it's after the fifth, sixth, or seventh call that you may actually get someone. The rate of return is higher after you've made five, six, seven calls. And also, it, it's seven. And also, it's specific times in the day that you should call. So, as a team building process, I took that information, shared it with the team, and said, hey, we make calls during this time. So, I'm not looking to just give them a piece of paper and for them to expect them to do it all, I'm training them as well in things that work. Thank you for calling. This is Rob. How can I help you? Hi. Yes. My name is 
Um, I received a letter from you, and you know, I don't like it because I've been a real estate agent for over 40 years. I am the executor of my husband's estate. Okay, I understand your frustration, ma'am. What I can do is I can take the address off the list. Can you provide the full address so that I can take it off the list, ma'am? Okay. If I needed to sell my house, I certainly would know how to do it. Okay, perfect, ma'am. Again, I apologize for any inconveniences, and uh, you have a wonderful afternoon ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Personal? Empathetic? knows not to push it. Those are things that get built with the right VAs over time. You can't just get a VA and throw them out there and expect them to handle situations and call them. Hello? Yes, hello, good afternoon. Mm -hmm. Hi, hi, this is Rob. Uh -huh. I was calling about yeah. I think one of our associates actually contacted you sometime a week ago, and I was wondering, because you, you mentioned that your asking price is 415000 and the square footage on this property is 2330 I was told a little more, but give or take that. Oh, yeah, give or take. What I was trying to figure out is that, is this, is this zoned to have, uh, let's say we purchased this and we have and we decide to put another house on the side or a garage or something, uh, would that be possible? I would think yes, because I own the, where the house is. Then, so there's the, obviously the backyard, a front yard, and the front yard ends, and then there's a wooded area, which is still my property. Mm -hmm. So that call goes on for about six minutes. Afternoon, this is Rob from Is this Mr. Yes. Okay, Mr. I actually was in the meeting. We tried to find out how do you call that the reach. Okay. Yeah, what is the asking the starting price? Mm -hmm. And what has it reached that you know that when you don't reach the second price, even though you win the bid, they not, it's not going to go through. Right. You know, Mr. That yes. is basically what you will, why you will need the services through in these types of situations. Now, I do understand, and I'm very familiar with auctions. Not every day is yeah. Christmas Day. Sometimes you would yeah. have to bid on a property that doesn't even make sense. The reason for being yeah. is that sometimes the auctions, the auctioneers have no choice because the bank has lost a lot of money on that property. Thus, they couldn't have or entertain a lower bid than, you know, a price that they've already yeah, published. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. knowledgeable about the process, knowing how to say the right things and to be able to communicate with someone on the end of the phone. Not just following a checklist that once it deviates from that set of 10 questions that you give them, what do they do? So could your VA well, understand that guy? Because I could. <laughs> yeah, he does pretty good with that. Yeah. Well, yes, hello. Is this speaking? Okay. This is Rob, and I'm, uh, I'm one of the partners for uh, my assistant just contacted you about your property. At okay, yes. Okay, so here's the thing. I can't make an offer unless you provide information. So that's the reason why my assistant is contacting you so that we can... Okay, mm -hmm. I can give you the bed. What, what information do you need? It's three bedrooms, two full baths. Okay, three bedrooms, two full bathrooms. Okay, what kind of repairs we need to do on the property? Is it uh, turnkey? It, 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 it needs nothing. It needs nothing, so it's turnkey, correct? Yes. Okay, is it currently occupied or is it currently rented or vacant? Okay, that's irrelevant to assess the price. If you're interested, you have the basics of what the property has. It needs nothing. It's a three-bedroom, two-fold bath. Although that other information is irrelevant <laughs> if you're making an offer on the property. That's irrelevant. Okay. Mr. Just to let you know, it should affect our offer because if you're currently renting the property out, I would ask for the rent rolls. You see? So this is the reason. I mean, that's the reason why we're contacting you. If you're right. not able to provide that information, that's the, totally the, fine. Mm -hmm. Right. The, the property rents at thirteen to fifteen hundred a month. Okay. That's what it okay. I owned it since oh five. Okay, perfect. Well, Mr. let me do our numbers. I appreciate you spending the time with me and providing all these information. And we'll contact you within the next 24 to 48 hours, okay? Gotcha. Okay. Thank right. you. Okay, bye-bye. So I use them a lot when I'm dealing with the city or I'm dealing with somebody, 
and then or the other VA is dealing with someone they can't get information out of them. I have them, I say, I need you to make this call. They, he makes calls for me like this to pull information out because he can be firm when it's time to be firm. He is not on the phone all the time. The other VAs are on the phone all the time. He always steps in when he needs to step in to <coughs> extract that information because he's more trained, he's well trained. He's been doing it a long time. So that's it for my presentation. I hope it was valuable to you all. One thing that I didn't mention is how I actually, how when I said that any one of you could come into my business and start working tomorrow, this is why. Everything that I do and that the business does from the beginning, when I decided to automate it, I recorded myself doing it. So, for instance, getting a lead tracking number, you got to call MDE, you got to give them property information, you got to give them an address, owner, they give you a lead tracking number. So one day I said, you know what, I'm going to type this process up. I typed it up. Then I called, recorded myself over video on the call. For every process that needs to be done in my business is documented, written, and video recorded. That is where your time and effort comes into play in the beginning. It's tough. Nobody wants to do that. That takes time. That's something you cannot delegate until you get to a certain level. Now I delegate that because I have templates. So if I say, hey, this is a new process, try this, do it, and then document what you did to do it. Every now and then I go back through that process to make sure it's the cleanest, most streamlined way because that's my expertise is business operations. So I know that maybe they missed something and it's a little different. We're in the US, they're in the Philippines, their business process is maybe a little bit different from ours. So I understand that and the corrections I make are very minimal, minimal, but they it works together for us as a team. So okay, thank, thanks for the presentation. Um, in my I've been in this, in this business like twelve years. Um, full time for the last four years. Um, when I first started
account, you know, I just search on the, the address and yep. the email comes up. And I can go in and I have, um, I don't use Great Central, I use Callfire. Yep. They also record every phone call from the back and the user can speak and then change it. My question really comes to this. So I figured this out. Seven years into my business of all this, trying to, trying to figure it out that a call center makes sense. Mm -hmm. What would you, and we know the call center makes sense, and I, I can attest to that, many of, many of us I'm sure can. What would you say are the things that you wish you had done sooner? The, the systems that you had put in place that you wish you had done, you know, right when you started your business as opposed to waiting until. So for me, it wouldn't be the virtual aspect, but the partnerships here on the ground. Because in the beginning, I was trying to run out to this property, run out to that property, do this, do that. And that's very hard when you work full time. So as I start leveraging people here physically, then that's something I wish I would have done earlier in the beginning. I wouldn't have had as many headaches. Like with property management, I don't show a property. I, when it's time to rent a property, the leasing agent gets all the calls, they put the property out, they take all the calls, then they schedule with my showing agent, a guy that's physically here, the showings. Or he calls and sets up the showing. So after he does that, applications come in electronically through the system. The VA goes through, makes sure all the documents that we ask for are in that packet. And then they say, here's a packet for review. And that's when I review because I need to approve it or disprove it. Once I say approve, they contact the applicant. They say they're approved when you want to move in. They give them a date. I create the lease. That's something legally binding. Could the VA do it? Yes, because it's the same lease. All they got to put the names in it. But I want that stamp. That's something that I have delegated. So I want to say that I did that part. After the lease is created, sent through DocuSign, they sign it. Showing agent gets an email that says, hey, so-and-so is moving in on this date. Can you call them and schedule what time they want to do? He does a move-in. He does a move-in inspection. He scans it. VA gets it, uploads it to the property, and we're paying tenants. And that's shit. So physical presence is what I wish I would have started. Like in the beginning, I was going to do the showings and doing all that stuff. Tyrus, your, your people on the ground here, is it? Like literally a, a real estate agent that's showing things, or no. just have somebody that he is a retired property manager, and he's looking for stuff to do. So he works here, and, and we have a really good relationship. He knows what he's doing, high integrity, very well documented because I like documentation and processes. For me, even for my clients, when I send them that packet, I got a lot of get a lot of people that don't want to fill out my management package. I don't want to work with that person. If you can't take the time to fill out a document about your property with all the stuff in it, whether you know it or not, then how am I going to talk to you about what needs to be done? Or we're we going to have an argument about the refrigerator needs to be replaced, and then you say, oh, no. And I'm just like, how many years? I don't know how old it is. So everything is very stringent with us, very document-oriented. If you don't want to fill it out, then you, I don't feel like you want to take care of a property. And that's how I chose him. And I work with people specifically based on who they are, their integrity, their willingness to go, their willingness to fit in a system because I can only work in a system. I'm not doing it any different for anybody else because once you make adjustments here, I got to make an adjustment for you and for you and for you, and then I got to manage 100 different adjustments. And the VA has got to take 100 different calls and say, hey, boss, how do I answer this question because it's different from this one? So everything is oriented, system-wise, we don't deviate much. Maybe an emergency. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so your VA, uh, you got it through Ken. Ken, Ken yeah. Ken. Uh, so someone who is here who would want a VA, what would you recommend to them? Because uh, yours came from a source that's no longer available, right? So what would you recommend to one of us if we said, uh, who would you recommend to VA from the Philippines? You can come through us. Okay. We work with different investors doing different things. We've done marketing, 
We've created campaigns for other businesses, hard money lending. So we've done that. I know you're on the fence with that. So they are available. Um, if you did not want to use this team, I would highly recommend creating your system, your documents first, and then you go somewhere. I don't think ODES exists anymore. It's something it's else. It's Upwork. Yeah. Upwork, go through Upwork, Fiverr, anywhere else with your documentation. Right. And say, this is how I want it done in test. You just have to test and test. Because we bring VAs onto the team, new VAs, and some don't work. They can't get into the structure. I had a VA. What will happen is she would send applicant information out and put the wrong person on the email. I get the email so I see it. Or right, you made that mistake. Let's do a retrain, let's do a video conference. Okay, you made that mistake again. Okay, Rob, I can't use it. We gotta get somebody else. So that's how it generally works. Because he's growing, he's bringing new people in, they have to be trained. But you need to process his documentation to know what they're trained against. A lot of people just take straight VAs and say, I want you to answer phone calls, answer these questions, and that's it. And then when it doesn't work, they don't know why. But there's no paperwork. There's no documentation. There's no curveball, what do I do in this situation? I record everything, and I look at everything. And even when I send new, like, if the VA can't answer a question, I say, OK, I'm going to answer it. But I'll CC them on there. That's how I answer it. You should be able to do it the next time. Or they will send me a message and say, how do I address this? So one thing you just brought up with the VA, the question was, um, like, how do you find it? How do you find the people? Of course, you can, um, what I did in the beginning was I, I hired the people I went to high school with that were in construction to do all my drywall and painting and whatever. And then I hired other people I went to high school with that are people I've known my whole life, family members, yeah. whatever. So whatever you tell me you're an expert in, I'll ask you a question that you should be, you shouldn't know to be an expert in that. Just to see, because you can embellish your resume. Okay, so a quick suggestion here, if you want to say it to yourself, a lot of time money, figure out where all these tasks are, right? I mean, if you, unless you do your own car repair, if you take your car to the camera, they got a guy who works with parts. They right. got somebody that specializes, you know, in uh, front end alignments, for example. You know, people have different sets of skills. You need to figure out the different more skill to you, like you look at all the, the authors, right, the contracts yeah. where the companies buy them, 
scripts, all that. I have everything from the first VAs I use. I still keep all those documents, the password, list, everything. You have to have all of that ready and available. Yeah, I'm going to jump back in here. The reason why I was asking this is because I've had uh, assistance on Upwork, and one of the issues I have with uh, shared VA, which you don't have that uh, issue because your VAs are uh, right. all under wrong and everything, is that I'll tell a VA to do something. I have scripts, I have videos, I'll tell them, this is what I want you to do, this is where I want you to do it. Somebody else that they know tells them to do something a little bit different, they change their process, and guess what effects? That's well, right. That's the difference between having a share. That's why I want to know where he gets his. Yeah. That's the difference between going on a site like that where they're not working for you specifically. They're working right. for whoever come in and pay the most. That's right. And then they will leave and disappear. Been there. That's why I pay a premium to keep a team together. Just to be clear, Tyrus, when uh, I spoke to these guys, and um, it's a customized quote. It's not, you know, like a flat fee. Right. Uh, they asked me probably 70 questions. And then it, they took four, five, six days before circled back and said, here's, here's the package we think you need based on what you said, and here's what we would charge. Um, and I, you know, all I did was, it was, it was more than I wanted to pay. I was tired and I wanted to, to more money I wanted to spend. But um, it, here I am three months later, and uh, the business is, you know, not being handled. It's stagnant, and um, you know, this was a nice uh, kick in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who don't know, Joe does a heck of a lot of business with people, so he's a big user. He's a good service. Not as much as Tyrus is. No questions? Oh, okay. catalyst to quit my full-time job was when I doubled my income. Then I said, well, at my job, I'm an IT infrastructure engineer, so I don't have, I have my up day, my slow days and my busy days. This is going on, this is on Facebook Live, so I want my employer to go back and be like, I ain't working. So, but for what I do and what I get paid, there comes that, do you really want to let that go? And then I've talked to a lot of investors, especially rental property owners and lenders that say, you need to that W-2 job. It's easier to get money when you have the W-2. It's easier to borrow, it's easier to leverage, it's easier to finance and refinance. So I go back and forth with that when I want to let go of my full-time job. I haven't decided yet. Well, do you still work here full-time? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Every day, Monday through Friday. She had. Um, you said the property management was a part of your business. What else do you do? And can you kind of give us, like, on a monthly average, what else is going on? So I'm a realtor. I do do listings and help with buyers. I have a separate, I partner with different agents, so I don't have to go out and physically do all of that. I'm a licensed contractor. We have one rehab going on in on Moore Avenue that we should be closing up on. And, about a week or so. So I have a project manager there <laughs> handling the groundwork on that. I just pull the permits, oversee it, make sure everything's going right, check in. But right now it's going very smooth. Um, my wife owns a translation business. I do all the business operations for that company as well. We are waiting on a state contract to come through and be funded so we can jump on that work. We should be doing that work. And, but I do all the contracts, the negotiating, filing, whatever paperwork needs to be filed. So I do that as well. Um, that's about it. And you have kids? Yeah, I have two kids. <laughs> they're, they should be, if it's not past 8 o'clock, they're at church clubs right now with my wife. And they do karate twice a week. So they're busy. We keep them busy and moving.
systems, I'm ready to take on another 150 units tomorrow. If you just show up with the units, I'll take them. I had a person come to me with 15 units just Monday. And I said, I can take them in, but my fee is a little bit higher. It may not work with your numbers. I charge 10%, 110 minimum. If your property is in that 750, 850 range, and I'm taking 110 minimum off the top, not going to work for you. But what's guaranteed is it'll be done right. I stand by quality. I'm not price shopping. And I'm not moving the price down either. I learned that from my dad and my cousins that all own their own businesses. We don't price shop. <laughs> We're not the cheapest. But it's quality what you get. But I'm ready to take renovation, rehabs. Talked to Manny about wholesaling just earlier. I talked to some other guys about wholesaling. It's just I'm ready to go. I'm ready to build it up. And scale it and be a millionaire, multi-millionaire. Something that my kids can inherit, a business that's running, that they don't have to go in and fix. If something happened to me tomorrow, my, the business will run for a while. My wife has knows all the passwords, where they are, they're all in the spreadsheet. All she gotta do is log in and close it out, if she chooses to do so. Because she worked in the business a little while before, so she knows something about it. She could probably run it where it is now, if something happened to me without us even talking about it. I built it that way. So it can survive without me. Awesome. Thoughts? Are, are you familiar with things like LastPass? Uh, the, uh, Passwords? Yeah. So I don't trust anything in my job. Yeah. And what I know, I don't trust anything that keeps all your information besides Google Drive. And I don't trust them really. But I know they're not going to go under overnight. Right. Last pass, you put all your passwords in there, and you get a key, and what happens if they get hacked? And all your information is gone. Yeah, I know about it. But <laughs> So I have a master's degree in cybersecurity. Right. So that's one of the things that I, I'm very conscious about, what I do online and my web presence and that kind of stuff. Going back to the 
I don't use VPNs here at all. I don't really need to. I may go incognito on Chrome if I if I need to. But what I do, I make sure the site is secure. Make sure they got a little lock at the top. And I don't do a lot to where I worry about if my information is going to get out. I don't have anything to hide. And the banking secure. They're all encrypted, so I shouldn't have to worry. If they get hacked, it's on them. It's not really me. Google's encryption, I can't really do anything better than what they already have. They're way beyond where I can be. I can do a VPN, but I'm not surfing overseas or doing nothing like that. Do you leave a password to the files like open or do you soft? Do you leave your passwords open in a secure files? Like it just gets you read or you soft? No, it's encrypted. You have to have a password. And it's on a private hard drive. So you can't get it unless you can get into my computer, which you can't hardly get in my computer. If you do, I'm probably going to wreck yours. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, I have cars in the back, and I have cars on me. If anybody wants to go down that line, you just contact me and we'll sit down and talk because everything I do is customized. I don't do the whole, you come to a class, you pay me, and I give you something that you can't use. It'll be a one-on-one -on -one type thing. Okay, so I think that question was where I was going to go. If somebody wants help doing, like, setting this up or figuring out how to work with VAs, you will work with them. Yep, so contact me, and we will sit down and have a meeting and a discussion. I choose who I work with as much as someone chooses to work with me. We have to be on the same wavelength. I want to see some kind of level that you can succeed and that you're ready to do the work. I've consulted with a lot of people, and some people never get off the ground because they don't want to put in that work. I don't want to get all my stuff together, or I want you to do all this. I can't do this without knowing where you are in the beginning. It doesn't work that way. And if it, you can pay some consultants $250, $300 an hour, and they'll come turn your whole business around, but you're still going to outlay that paperwork. You're still going to give them all access to what you have, one way or the other. So if you want to figure, talk, and sit down, and we move forward, and you're looking to scale, grab a car, give me a call. I'll put you on the calendar. <laughs> yeah, we we'll just come out to the meetups or to the Monday mixers. Every Monday, first Monday of every month, we have the Monday mixer. Nothing but networking. I'll be there. So, wrap it up. Feel free to stay, hang out, network. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't do it at the beginning. Who was out here la last month? What book did I recommend? Alpha Rod's uh, Beautiful Morning. Okay. Miracle Morning. So, both of you give me a card or some contact information. I give you a book. Who else was here? What did you read, Miracle Morning? What are the six sabers? <laughs> All right, I got something for you too, TC. Well, have a good night. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time.